Warning. This recording contains profanity and twilight bashing. If either of these offends you, grow the fuck up. Sup, YouTube, Tumblr, and Twilight Sucks community. So, I'm sitting in the writing center at my university, waiting for my appointment that never showed up, when it's brought to my attention that someone posted a blog against hating Twilight. Big surprise, right? Been done many times, so why should this one bother me? Well, let's see. First, it was posted on ideas.time.com, a subsidiary site for Time Magazine that uses the tagline, Essential Insights, Great Debates, Informed Opinions. This entry features none of these. Essential Insights? If you're spouting the same inane babble as countless individuals before you, what you have to say is hardly an essential insight. Great debates? The comment section is filled with the same back and forth between fans and antis that have been going on since the series became popular enough to have a fandom and hate them. Informed opinions? HA! <laughs> Allow me to elaborate. I'm going to keep track of the number of logical fallacies that occur within this article, by the way, and will provide a final grade at the end based on, say, one mark for each occurrence of a logical fallacy? I think that's fair. First, I must address the tendency time seems to have of posting the qualifications, yes, I used air quotes for that, of their contributors. This article is about the hating of Twilight, both the book and the movie. The article's writer has the qualifications of a master's degree in public health and a master's degree in education, neither of which require or feature any insight into literary or film criticism, let alone the various theories and practices that have occurred within either medium throughout their respective existences. She is also an early childhood educator and a Harvard, well, Harvard College administrator. Again, neither deal with literature or film. Thus, the author has no actual qualifications to indicate that her opinion of this topic is any more valid than, say, some random one might pull off the street. But as this is a policy of time, I'll only mark this down for half an instance of an appeal to authority. Why do I bring this up? Um, mostly because I want to establish from the get-go that I'm dealing with an opinion piece from someone without a particularly informed opinion. Anyway, I've not even begun with the article and the author is already at half a point in logical fallacy. The title for this piece is the harsh bigotry of Twilight haters. Again, we have an issue. We're just now covering the title, which is specifically of the author's making, and we've already got a case of appeal to ridicule, appeal to spite, as well as ad hominem. The structure, well, the title is structured so that the opinion of Twilight haters is already written off as ridiculous and worded so as to create a feeling of spite against said individuals, as well as from them toward fans. Not a good idea. On top of that, the author already has chosen to try to put down the statements of the hate dumb because we're mean. For those keeping track, We've just now touched the title, and the author has three and a half marks of logical fallacy. By the way, as for this so-called bigotry, here's what I had to say during the period of my hate of the series, when my hate was at its peak. Whatever the case, Betsy, you need to realize that everyone has a differing opinion, and that if you're capable of expressing yours, then so can everyone else. But when you really come down to it, no one really cares that one person likes something or not. All anyone really wants to know is whether or not you've come to that conclusion for yourself. And if you cannot honestly come up with some valid reasons for your like or dislike that actually mean something to you, and are not just ideals that have been spoon-fed you by the media or your peers, 
you really need to stop and ask yourself why that is. But most importantly, you need to figure out how to avoid it in the future. Critical thinking is one of the most important skills you could ever wish to master. It will definitely allow you to enjoy life a lot more when you know that you are enjoying it for your own reasons. And if your reasons are thought out and mean something to you, then no one can ever take that away from you. So buck up and think. It's not illegal yet. Bigotry? Pardon? The tagline for the article is, Why is it that female fantasy is so derided and feared? Three things. One, it's not. Two, if Twilight's your idea of female fantasy, you need to get out more. And three, this is a red herring. Four and a half marks. The body goes on to say, Hating Twilight is so 2009. Appeals to both novelty and common practice. Six and a half marks. And with the newest installment, Breaking Dawn, ruling the box office, the juggernaut hardly needs defenders. Appeal to popularity, seven and a half marks. That it does well with a crowd does not indicate anything about its quality. This is a situation in which numbers don't speak for themselves. But the virulent seriousness of the haters is surprising. If you can recall it being present back in 09, eh, this shouldn't be so. Many of the reviews have heaped disproportionate and moralizing scorn on an Oscar-winning director's fantasy enactment of a young girl's dreams and fears. First, the scorn is exactly proportionate, and I'm being generous on that. Moralizing? I think that's appropriate too, considering the film features the character Jacob falling in love with a newborn baby, which is pedophilia for those who aren't up on their moral discussions, and it creates an extremely polarized and uneducated treatment of the abortion topic, which is an extremely sensitive moral topic. That the director won Oscars is relevant to the film, which is another red herring. Eight and a half marks. Kristen Stewart and her co-stars have been excoriated for their sullen and wooden performances despite receiving respectable and sometimes highly favorable reviews in other movies in which they have starred. Because actors always turn in the same level of performance? Yeah, no. Not the case. The negative reactions fall in two camps. The dismissive camp simply mocks Twilight's incorporation of silly, moony elements like undying love and the surprisingly authentic portrayal of wedding ritual, honeymoon jitters, and the shock of unintended pregnancy. The topics are apparently too boring and unrelatable for most reviewers. And they are more than welcome to say such, but... It's not because the topics are too boring and unrelatable, it's how this movie deals with them that is too boring and unrelatable. By the way, one of these things is not like the other. The shock of unintended pregnancy is hardly silly or moony, but the way the characters were written, it's portrayed as such. Had unprotected sex, how could we possibly have gotten her pregnant? That deluded camp, Ed Howenham, appeal to ridicule, appeal to spite, and appeal to pity due to the use of the word deluded often being used to pity an individual. Twelve and a half marks. Conversely, takes Twilight far too seriously. Appeal to ridicule and spite, and Ed Howenham. Fifteen and a half marks faulting it for leading young girls to mistake fantasy for reality in dangerous, disempowering ways. Been to the Twy Moms forum? If it can do that to adults, I can only fear the toll it's had on younger individuals. Except I recall a good number of the encounters antis have had with fans, so... I can imagine quite readily that this claim is not nearly as absurd as you would like to believe. Now, obviously, the fandom as a whole isn't like that, but it's not outside the realm of possibility, considering it's happened. 
It makes you wonder if some people missed the memo that hundreds of millions of females, like their male counterparts, enjoy the fantasy life straight up weird, sexy, and implausible. First, appeal to belief, appeal to common practice, appeal to popularity, appeal to ridicule, bandwagoning, bias, sample, hasty generalization, spotlighting, ad hominem, and ad hominem to quote. 25 and a half marks. Second, fiction reflects reality in some way. Fantasy is a form of fiction. Suspension of disbelief is not a crutch. And implausibility is beyond a limit that varies with each individual shatters the suspension of disbelief, which in turn causes the work to no longer suitably reflect reality, which causes the work to no longer skate by under the umbrella of It's fiction, so it's okay. The term a wizard did it to explain mind-numbingly ridiculous scenarios is not a positive phrase to have uttered about a work. Why is it that female fantasies are such a source of derision and fear? They aren't. Unless they're stupid. Like Twilight. The male species... Wait, what? You fail biology forever! Is allowed all manner of violent, creepy, ludicrous, and degrading movie tropes, and while we may not embrace them as high art, no one questions them seriously as entertainment, even when sometimes we probably should. Agreed? But you're missing a key point. Criticisms are about measuring things within the spectrum of art, not their fluff entertainment value. Also, special pleading, 26 and a half points. Violent imagery is, after all, associated with violent behavior. But only when an individual is predisposed toward violence. Red herring, by the way. 27 and a half points. You want to saw someone in half or put their head in a vice? Showcase naked strippers as a fake plot device? Pair a beautiful and successful career woman with a slovenly unemployed man? Pretend you are Wolverine? Go right ahead. We know you can't really be serious. Congratulations on identifying the surface value of such things for the entertainment aspects they feature. You're not getting your fallacy score reduced, though. But watch a tender wedding night between a virginal undead superhero and his teenage human bride and the scolds come out in force. Wait. Are we still talking about Breaking Dawn? Rooting Edward, who killed numerous people because they had bad thoughts, is not virginal. Nor is Brooding Edward, who killed numerous people because they had bad thoughts and only lifted a finger to fight Victoria and the newborn vampires she made of helpless victims, is not a superhero. And he only lifted that finger because they threatened Bella not because they were endangering the countless other civilians in, well, name of the town that escapes me, but yeah, you get the point. But yes, some people are turned off by the thought of necrophilia. How is this surprising? Plus, need I remind you that we're dealing with someone over a century old who's banging someone you yourself call a teenager? When people say age is just a number, they're not talking about wanting to bang someone old enough to be their great-grandfather, you know. Are parents worried that their teenage daughter actually wants to be impregnated by a hundred-year-old vampire who can crush a headboard with his hands and perform an emergency C-section with his teeth? Probably not. So, straw man and red herring, 29.5 points. Maybe part of the reason critics deplore these movies is not only because they are so unfamiliar with kooky heterosexual female fantasies, but also because they don't really like what these fantasies say about men. Straw Man, 30.5 points. Also, considering that Edward is a controlling, manipulative bastard, Jacob turns out to be a pedophile, and Charlie, the only male character that actually 
is a character, not a cardboard cutout, that makes it through the series and is still likable, is portrayed through Bell's narration as being incompetent or in the uh, film's presentation as being completely powerless and out of the picture. Uh, Yeah, the critics would have a point when saying that the books aren't particularly male-friendly. And seriously, you should stop trying to use female fantasies, let alone heterosexual female fantasies, as though it were one and the same with what Twilight offers. There are plenty of heterosexual females out there that don't like what Twilight is selling. The discomfitting spell check anyone reality of the twilight phenomenon is the way it strips off the veneer of detente between the sexes wait don't tell me you're one of those who think that all this time society has only been pretending to get more egalitarian between male and female granted there's a lot further to go But that you're even posting your opinion online and have two graduate degrees, as well as an administrative job in Harvard, is a testament from your own personal life of the progress that's been made. For all the progress we promised our daughters, women's bodily experiences mark them in ways not only unimaginable, well, yeah physical activities tend to have a way to leave marks on the body, but also uninteresting and even repulsive to men. You don't want to hear about our bodily functions, so that we don't want to hear about yours, it's a fair trade-off. When was the last time or only time you saw a movie that featured menstruation? The Runaways directed by a woman. Well, I was going to say The Reaping, personally, but The Runaways, by the way, was also released just last year, so what's your point? Also, Breaking Dawn Part 1 is the second Twilight film to be released since The Runaways, and the closest Meyer ever got to mentioning menstruation was in answer to a question for a Q&A. So this little aside has nothing to do with Twilight. Red herring, 31.5 points. Most mothers know the sense of their body being taken over by aliens. The host movie hasn't come out yet, you know. And more than 500,000 women still die in childbirth every year worldwide. Is it really so surprising that we wouldn't be drawn to Bella's gruesome tribulations? If the experience were truly that gruesome, why would you be drawn to it? Other than, of course, for the shock value akin to, to borrow one of your examples, sawing someone in half. Which, by the way, was one of the instances of something being entertaining that you indicated should be questioned for its entertainment value. Way to go! For all its tremendous ick factor and craziness, the vampire hybrid delivery captured with excruciating realism the desperation on poor Edward's bloodied face that attends a birth when things go badly wrong. You could have just said badly, you know, when things go badly. That indicates that they went wrong. By the by... Those of us in the hate them are actually applauding how viscerally the birth scene was portrayed. I think you're confusing the critics with the hate them, which the hate them was what you addressed in the topic. The critics are what you're trying to address in the text, which, like female fantasies in Twilight, aren't one at the same. So, guilt by association, 32.5 points. You could hear a pin drop at the screening my daughter and I attended. Probably because the normally screaming fandom was having trouble coming to terms with the reality of what they'd read however many times. The gothic horror felt more palpable because it merely exaggerated rather than imagined sui generis. I do believe you need to refresh your memory on what that term means as it doesn't apply here. What many women go through every day. We share no blood. 
Congratulations. So do men. Your point? The other thing women know all too well is the lurking danger of men. Huh. And here are some of the feminists in the Twilight Sucks community had been trying to claim that the man-hating form of feminism was just a matter of propaganda spawned by those opposing the movement. Interesting. Which, by the way, brings us ad hominem, appeal to spite, appeal to fear, appeal to emotion, guilt by association, personal attack, poisoning the well, misleading vividness, red herring, and spotlight. 42.5 points. By the way, I'm personally not opposed to feminism, the idea, it's just the misandry that often gets confused with it by like people like this author here that I have a problem with. Going for women's rights? By all means. As long as you're boosting it toward equivalence, good. No problem. When you're trying to use women's issues as a way to demonize men? No! Equality, man! Gotta go for equality! Anyway, moving on. The idea of a wildly earnest romantic lead who isn't demanding oral sex in the high school parking lot and who happens to look like Robert Pattinson is all very appealing, no? Yet our perfect vampire man, alas, also has the capacity to inflict serious harm. Much like in the non-cinematic world, as even five-year-old girls can intuit. But that his capacity to inflict harm, both physical and psychological, goes severely unnoticed and ignored, with fans doing everything they can to ignore it whenever it's pointed out to them that Edward's various behavioral quirks are precisely in line with known behaviors of abusers. How's that play into your fantasy of a wildly earnest romantic lead? Do your fantasies involve being hooked up with a guy that'll break your car so you can't hang out with your friends? You don't have to read Steven Pinker's fine new book on violence, The Better Angels of Our Nature, to grasp that women have always been its singular victims. Uh, women have been the singular victims of violence? Excuse me? Did your degree not require you to study any form of history? Have you not been watching the news at any point within the past few weeks, let alone decade? Red herring, by the way, 43.5 points. The devastating power of rape, which results in pregnancy 5% of the time, according to a 1996 study in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, is its ability to change the progeny of a woman forever. Couldn't find a more recent study? Also, are you talking about progeny collectively, or the individual involved with the rape itself? This threat often clouds our real lives, and it certainly clouds our confused notions of entertainment. Um, being aware of the existence of rape clouds notions of entertainment? If anything, I should think it would make you much more astute at selecting what forms of entertainment you deem to be worthwhile. Is it any wonder that the young man whose heart Bella tosses aside for Edward is, you guessed it, a wolf? Not at all, considering that it was poorly foreshadowed from the start. And yet Jacob is still consistently portrayed as being the much better choice than Edward, barring, oh, barring of course, the pedophilia and that one scene in Eclipse. Your point? As one of my jaded neighbors once opined, all men is half dog. Oh, wow. Besides the grammar fail, let's go down the roll, shall we? Ad hominem, appeal to authority, full this time, appeal to ridicule, appeal to spite, by a sample, guilt by association, hasty generalization, misleading vividness, personal attack, poisoning the well read, herring, special pleading, and spotlight. 56.5 points. If this offends you, take a number. Nah. Other than counting the fallacies that heaped in onto your score, I'm jaded enough for it to not bother me. 
I'd already braced myself due to your prior inclination towards misandry, so... You can't count the fucks I give because... Counting starts at one. Women have long endured men's insulting and unhinged fantasies. Just lie back and enjoy the estrogen drip. No thanks. Also, ad hominem appeal to ridicule appeal to spite by a sample, guilt by association, genetic fallacy, hasty generalization, misleading vividness, personal attack, poisoning the well, red herring, special pleading, spotlight, straw man, and two mo- wrongs make a right. 71.5 points. Congratulations! If you are taking a test to see how fallacious your logic were, you'd pass with a C-. minus. But since you're trying to provide an informed opinion, spark a great debate, or otherwise provide an essential insight, we'd have to view these points as negative, which means you have a final grade of 28.5%. Whoa, F minus. You had some comments that weren't flawed logically, so that's a good thing. However, you never actually address the criticisms of the series to establish if they're valid or not. You never actually reveal any sort of bigotry on the part of the hate which I can attest there are some within the hate that are bigoted against the fans, but that there are some does not in any way indicate that we are all like that. Much of the Twilight Sucks community, for example, doesn't give a damn that someone enjoys the series, as long as they don't go around trying to claim that it is any way intelligent or a form of high art. You never actually cover the matter of your topic, nor do you find an answer to your title subtext. This leads me, of course, to conclude that you don't have a clue what you're really trying to say other than, men are evil. But hey, having already established that you weren't qualified to talk about either film or literary art, I'd been expecting this from the get-go. Try learning a thing or two about either artistic medium, then come back and try to have a reasonable blog about whether or not the criticisms are unwarranted. Okay? Thanks.